Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing something called the lactate threshold and OBLA, which stands for the onset of blood lactate accumulation. So in the previous video, we talked extensively about what lactate is, how it relates to uh, lactic acid and lactate dehydrogenase and exercise, and then also cleared up some misconceptions on how it actually lowers pH. We mentioned that decreased pH is not caused by lactic acid. It's not like lactic acid has a proton, and that proton is what you know, acidifies the blood. It actually has to do with something called the small ion difference, and the plasma needing to maintain electroneutrality. I'm not going to go into much detail on that here, but go back and watch the previous video if you want to learn a little bit more about what lactate actually does to acidify the blood. Here, I'm going to assume that you understand a little bit about that, and we're going to apply a little bit of this to exercise at different intensities. Okay? So here's a graph right here, and let me explain what it is. On the vertical axis, we have a measurement of the lactate concentration. It's in millimoles per liter or millimolar. Okay? So obviously, lactate levels are going to start out very low. On the horizontal axis, we have the exercise intensity. It's measured in watts. Okay? And what we see is a pattern here where as the exercise intensity increases along the horizontal axis, we start to see an exponential increase in the amount of lactate in the blood. It's also worth mentioning that we have this other axis up here, a second horizontal axis that actually represents the heart rate in beats per minute, and this corresponds pretty well because we would assume as the exercise intensity increases, the heart rate would also increase. Okay? But the main thing I want you to notice about this graph is it has an exponential growth pattern to it. Okay? Now, let's look at when we're at rest, okay? at the lowest possible exercise intensity we could have. In fact, we're not even exercising at that point. We might as well just be laying in our bed. Notice that the level of lactate is not zero. Okay? So there is always some lactate production. If you're sitting watching this video right now, there's lactate being produced by your body. And again, let's review briefly how lactate is produced. It's produced via glycolysis. So glucose is converted to pyruvate by glycolysis, that 10-step enzymatic process. And then pyruvate can do a couple of things. Um, it can either be oxidized to acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria, or still in the cytoplasm, it can be uh, reduced to lactate via this enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. And this process is always happening to some extent, even if it's a very small amount. Okay? But as your exercise intensity increases, you're going to see a greater production of lactate. Now, if we look in this region right here, okay, on the left side, which is actually most of this graph, we see that as we increase exercise intensity, we really don't see it much of an increase in lactate, meaning that as, if we go from 115 beats per minute um, up to 145 or 150 beats per minute, there really is not much of an increase in lactate. In fact, it's less than doubling. It doesn't really increase that much. Okay. But at some point, as we're increasing exercise intensity, we're going to hit something called the aerobic threshold. Okay? So in this athlete, this is some sample data, in this particular athlete, it appears that the aerobic threshold is somewhere between 150 and 155 beats per minute for the heart rate. Let's say 153 beats a minute. So what is the aerobic threshold? Well, everything to the left of that, so every intensity or heart rate below the aerobic threshold, we're operating completely off of aerobic metabolism. Now remember what aerobic metabolism is. It means that we're taking this glucose, converting it to pyruvate, and then we're taking the vast majority of that pyruvate and putting it into acetyl-CoA and then into the Krebs cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. So basically, aerobic metabolism implies mitochondrial metabolism. That's what gives us an enormous amount of ATP. However, what we see in practice during exercise is that we can only rely solely on oxidative, or I should say uh, aerobic metabolism, when we're at a lower exercise intensity. So for example, this athlete, that occurs below 153 beats a minute. Okay? So this athlete, under these conditions, would be operating solely off of aerobic metabolism. However, as we start to increase the exercise intensity, there's a threshold that we cross, where above that, 
it turns out that aerobic metabolism is no longer sufficient to supply all of the energy. So let's suppose we're at 165 beats a minute. Let's just say we're right here. So that's right here on the graph. We're clearly past this aerobic threshold, this line, okay? We're actually about halfway past it right here. And so at 165 beats per minute, what we mean is that aerobic metabolism is no longer sufficient by itself. We have to throw in some anaerobic metabolism as well. So it's not like we're switching just to anaerobic metabolism. We're sort of augmenting aerobic metabolism with anaerobic metabolism on top of that. I have another video where I explain that, and I will try very hard to remember to put the link to that in the description. Uh, but basically, we're going to have to add a little bit of anaerobic metabolism on top of that aerobic metabolism. So that's going to come with a consequence, which I'll mention in just a minute. So that anaerobic metabolism above the aerobic threshold is going to be provided by the production of lactate. So pyruvate can be reduced into lactate via lactate dehydrogenase. Now, what that essentially means is instead of almost 100% of the pyruvate going to acetyl-CoA, maybe we switch to now 80% uh, of the pyruvate is going to acetyl-CoA, the other 20% is going to lactate. So we're just changing the proportion of how much is actually going to form lactate. And the production of that lactate is going to provide us uh, the extra energy on top of aerobic metabolism, okay, in order to go to a higher exercise intensity. Now, the other important thing about this aerobic threshold is that at this point, if we cross it, going to the right, by increasing exercise intensity, we've crossed what's called the lactate threshold, okay? The lactate threshold is the exercise intensity at which lactate concentration begins to increase exponentially. So if we look here going from 115 beats a minute all the way up to, let's say, 150, so we haven't yet crossed this aerobic threshold, we do see a slight increase in the amount of lactate, but it appears to be more linear, okay? Once we cross this aerobic threshold, which is actually the lactate threshold, that's when we see the beginning of this exponential increase. Okay? It's no longer linear, it's exponential. Okay? And so the greater exercise intensity we have, we have an increasing amount of lactate that's produced. Now, at this part of the video, we're only talking about the region to the right of the aerobic threshold and not past this line, which is the anaerobic threshold. So let's constrict our talk between 155 and 175 beats a minute. So in this area, we've crossed the lactate threshold and we're, we have an exponential increase in the amount of lactate that's produced. However, we could still exercise at this intensity uh, for a decent amount of time. And that's because even though we're having an increase in the accumulation rate of lactate, um, we're not actually having a drop in the clearance of lactate. Remember that lactate is actually able to be utilized by other parts of the body. For example, the cardiac muscle can utilize lactate. Other tissues, even the brain, can actually utilize lactate. So the clearance of it is still maintained. It's just that we're accumulating a little bit more and more and more. So for example, if we're at, let's say, 170 beats a minute, okay, we're producing a lot more lactate than we were at rest, uh, but 170 beats a minute, uh, we're still able to clear that lactate decently because, again, our heart muscle, our brain, other tissues are able to utilize the lactate that the skeletal muscles are producing. Okay? So again, the key with past the lactate threshold, but again, below the anaerobic threshold, so in this area right here, is yes, we have an increased rate of accumulation of lactate, but there's no loss of clearance of that lactate. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. But now let's suppose we start increasing the intensity even more. So at some point, and that looks to be about 177 beats a minute for this athlete, we cross something called the anaerobic threshold. So if we were between the aerobic threshold and right up before the anaerobic threshold, so in this area, we were still using aerobic metabolism, but we were augmenting it with anaerobic metabolism. But we were still able to clear that lactate by sending it to other tissues and they utilize it. So, once we hit the anaerobic threshold, all bets are off. Another name for the anaerobic threshold is, this is what's called the OBLA, or the onset of blood lactate accumulation. So what we see is at this exercise intensity and beyond, 
we now have a drastic increase. It's the exponential increase is even greater here for lactate. And this is going to occur for two reasons. Uh, one, the accumulation of lactate is still increasing, and it's increasing for the same reasons as before. We have to provide more energy, and aerobic metabolism alone isn't going to do it. So the higher the intensity above that, we have to have more anaerobic metabolism, therefore more lactate. So the accumulation rate is actually still increasing. But here's the problem. The clearance rate of lactate is decreasing in this region. So our ability to actually clear that lactate actually is dropping. And so we're getting more and more lactate accumulation in the blood. Now, once you cross this anaerobic threshold, or the OBLA, onset of blood lactate accumulation, you're not going to be able to exercise at that intensity for very long. So for example, at this person, 180 beats a minute, um, they're not going to be able to exercise very long at that intensity. They're going to fatigue very quickly, because now you're starting to accumulate that lactate and you're unable to clear it. Now typically, um, we have several estimations for OBLA which is the anaerobic threshold. Um, one is when the lactate concentration in the blood reaches four millimolar. Now here, it's a little bit uh, less than four millimolar and it's gonna vary on the athlete. It's gonna be dependent on the identity of the athlete and how fit they are and just genetic differences and all that. But generally a good estimate for the onset of blood lactate accumulation is a lactate concentration of four millimolar in the blood. Now, the reason this OBLA is so useful, or the anaerobic threshold, is because we can actually use it to predict a person's VO2 max. Notice I said predict. I didn't say measure the VO2 max. If we're measuring the VO2 max, that would imply that a person is actually exercising at their VO2 max, 100% of it. And if you can imagine, that's not exactly ideal. Not only is it difficult to measure, but getting someone up to 100% of the VO2 max you're at an extraordinarily high exercise intensity. We generally don't want to make people do that. So what we do is we make them exercise up until their OBLA, onset of blood lactate accumulation, which usually is going to occur around a lactate concentration in the blood of four millimolar, although this can vary a little bit. Well, the nice thing about that is that OBLA generally is going to occur around 85% of a person's heart rate max, and 75% of a person's VO2 max. So if we can measure when a person has reached 85% of their heart rate max, that's probably gonna be where they're at their OBLA, okay? And so if they're at 85% of their heart rate max, once they get to that point, that implies they're probably at 75% of their VO2 max. Then we can just do a simple calculation to estimate their VO2 max. Okay? So this is something that we'd actually have to do in a VO2 max test. Okay? But it's all based on this scientific principle of the onset of blood lactate accumulation. Okay? So again, I covered a lot of stuff in this video, but lactate threshold, all blah, and what everything in this graph represents, and hopefully it makes sense to you now. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.